morning. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, thank you to Linda for uh, inviting me and also making my job a lot easier because she showed quite a bit of slides with uh, NVIDIA and Advantage products so that I don't have to show many of those. But I actually will show a real device later. So a little bit about uh, uh, NVIDIA. We are a computing platform company and this is our headquarters uh, in uh, Silicon Valley in Santa Clara. And by the way, this is being built right now. And that is, uh, that is our headquarters and this is being built. It will probably open late next year. And it's funny because I actually sit right here on the top floor. <laughs> and for the last year and a half as this building is being built, I can see every day what's going on. Except that I actually don't because I'm immersed in work so much that somebody the other day came and asked me, you know, what, what do you think about it? And I'm like, I never see it even though I'm right against the window. <laughs> and when this building was being built, incidentally, I was actually here watching all this old buildings being torn down. So these are headquarters we have. Uh, uh, we are a 26 year old company, uh, founded in 1993. Founder, CEO, still Jensen Wong. We call him the son of uh, Taiwan. And, uh, and I think he'll be the CEO of NVIDIA for the next 50 years, or if not 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reason I, I say that is, of course, uh, I don't know if how many of you have met Jensen or seen him, he's a super energetic guy, but I, I used to joke around inside NVIDIA that there's only <coughs> one risk that Jensen will not be coming to office in, you know, if he was going to be hit by a bus. Not that's going to happen, but he's fixing that too by building autonomous cars that will never have accidents. So there's no chance that uh, you know he will not be the CEO of NVIDIA for and helping the world for the next uh, 50, if not 100 years. <laughs> so what we do at NVIDIA is most people in the world know NVIDIA as a graphics company. That's how we started. Uh, focused primarily on gaming. And uh, you know, if you're a PC gamer, uh, you play a lot of games, or if you use a Nintendo Switch, uh, you know, playing some of those console games, you, you, you're using NVIDIA. That's how we started. But since then, we've taken the same parallel processing approach for a graphics processor unit, a GPU, and extended it to be high-performance computing. So actually, the top, many of the top 500 supercomputers in the world, green supercomputers in the world, are all accelerated using NVIDIA GPU. And the reason why GPUs have been used for that is very simple. What, without GPUs, you would not be able to do your life's work in your lifetime. Meaning, if you needed to simulate something like, you know, oil and natural gas, or, uh, you know, uh, weather simulation, or any other, these, these sort of high performance computing models used to take months, if not years. And by bringing something like a GPU, you would speed up something by a factor of 100, factor of 1,000, which means suddenly it becomes more useful. So we've got it to HPC. And then in the last five years, of course, AI is this massive tool that came to our, uh, you know, that, that came to, every industry is using AI now. And so AI. So, so we basically, at this point, we are working on the intersection of graphics, high performance computing, and AI all, all together. Now, all of us as consumers have been using AI in the last five years. There is absolutely no debate about that. If you have any question, just check. If you have been using your mobile device, absolutely your mobile device is connected to the cloud, whether it's iCloud or whether it's somewhere in the Android or any of some of your apps. And AI is happening in the cloud somewhere. So that whether it's OK Google or Siri or Netflix recommendation engine or you're using Spotify for you know, what sort of uh, you know, music you like and being recommended. So we all have been using AI. And it exclusively has been in the cloud until recently. Now we all talk about this AI at the edge. And, and we started working on AI at the edge a uh, little over five years ago. And, and the reason for why AI at the edge, I think all of you know very well. Very simply, people talk about you know, latency sensitive applications, or there's not enough bandwidth, or there's, you know, you need privacy, or in some cases, free 5G at least, availability of connectivity. Let's say you are stuck somewhere on the ground and you don't have connectivity all the time, so you want to process something in this. So it's very clear as to why AI needs to move from being only in the cloud to the edge. Now, that said, there is one or two major problems by trying to bring AI from the cloud to the edge. A lot of people say, well, it is computing. In a cloud, of course, you can have virtually unlimited compute. 
where else at the edge because of power reasons or size reasons or cost reasons. You know, we need to have something that is uh, you know, much smaller, so you do not have unlimited computing power. Yes, that is true. But there's one other thing that a lot of people actually don't focus on that makes cloud such a significant advantage, and that's what I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about here. So the thing that makes cloud so good is, now, how many of you use uh, Cortana or your voice assistant, Alexa or any of those? Any of any voice assistant? Okay. Have you noticed that it's better now than it was three months ago or six months ago or a year ago? Things get better all the time, right? In the cloud? How does it happen? The reason it happens is, of course, the, the new AI, new networks, new algorithms, new capabilities, new software, in the cloud is always happening in the background. And it's happening in a secure manner, it's happening in an uninterruptible manner. We as consumers don't have to worry about it. It just gets better and better over time in the background. Now when you're bringing that AI capability to the edge, you need, for many of these applications, similar thing needs to happen, which is you need to have make sure it is secure and it is field upgradable constantly in the background. And that has a lot to do with how you configure the systems and how you build the whole platform and actually very little to do with AI, core AI itself. AI is nothing but a tool, but AI is not the complete end-to-end -end application. AI, a neural network model, of course, runs something and infers something and comes back with an output, but before that happens, there's a lot of pre-processing that needs to be done, there's a lot of post-processing that needs to be done, and completely separate from AI, Who's updating the models in the background? Who's updating the software in the system? So that is super, super important. So <coughs> NVIDIA, we built an end-to-end -end platform for AI computing. We, of course, first started with, in order to create, in order to make AI happen, the first thing you need to do is create a neural network, right? If you don't even create a neural network, how are you going to uh, run the neural network? So the creation of the neural network is called something, you need to train a neural network. And training is a heavily compute intensive process and it happens on big computers, and that's what you see on the left side of the picture. And then once you train those neural networks, you go and deploy those, and the first deployments of the neural network called inferencing, of course, happen in the cloud, as I mentioned, you know, because of the mobile cloud revolution. And that's, you know, you have data centers, you have many, you know, many, many racks of servers in data center, and all of those nowadays are accelerated by GPU. So you have a CPU, and then you have a GPU combined with the and that's the cloud. So now we are talking about bringing AI to the edge. And when you're talking about AI to the edge, there's two pieces to it. One, of course, AI to the edge is the end device itself, the end machine itself. Your robot, your security camera, your self-driving car, your delivery robot, any of those things. So that's a device. But then you also actually tend to see something in the middle people call you know what they call it, they call it the you know, near edge, some people call it on-premise appliance, some people call it on-premise server, some people call it fog. It's essentially what it is, a gateway device, right? It's an aggregation point that is not far in the cloud, but somewhere close to the, close to the, in a factory, for example. And, and that's what that, that is. That, and that's what we, so we build platforms for the edge. One is called the EGX line of platform, and one is called the AGX for autonomous machines, devices, and for the edge AI, it's called ETX. So this is a high level overview of what, what it means. At a very simple level, this is about bringing cloud software to run on premise in an edge appliance or an edge server. That's, that's very simple, at a very high level. So what that means is then, you need, you're basically bringing in the ability to, first of all, it needs to be cloud native, it is virtually a cloud that's brought on premise. So you need to have all sort of security, obviously, you know, anti tamper proof, and, and so you need to secure boot, uh, root of trust, and, and many other things. <coughs> so, so that's basically managing the, the server or the appliance itself, and that's at the bottom. But then you build your application stack on top of it, because at the end of the day, you know, what's good, what good is a cloud, or what good is a server that, that, that you know, can do all of that, but then you need to run your AI capability, right? So I'll give you an example of you know one of our platforms called Metropolis. And Metropolis is a platform for 
streaming IoT or intelligent video analytics, processing hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of streams of data that's coming in real time from all these H devices that, that can be processed. So let me show you a couple of examples as to how it works. So, so in this example, this is a real deployment, by the way, in one of the cities in uh, uh, United States. So what we do is, so here you can see there is a traffic campus in a small city. Small city, this is actually, it turns out to be a city by the name of Dubuque in uh, Iowa. Uh, how come we work with that city? It just happened the city was cooperating and they are happy to give us the data to help them build this uh, you know, prototype. So you have all these traffic cameras that are, you know, the highway here and you have different uh, traffic cameras. And all those traffic cameras are coming over, in this case, Ethernet into a, a server, basically a server. It has multiple GPUs in it. And then, this my video ran out, so let me see. Okay. So there are 64 cameras that are coming in. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is all those cameras are coming into this one server, one appliance. And we need to basically authenticate that you know, they're coming from the right services, and we deploy all those uh, cameras that are coming in. And then next, so you see one of the cameras being zoomed in, and, and you can see that is the input data, and in this case, output data, AI model is running, and in this, model, in this case, uh, the, you know, the vehicles are being uh, detected in, in real time. Well, that's, that's fine, but then let's say you come up with a better AI model, wherein you want to detect more cars of the highly accurate model. What do you do in a real situation? Are you going to shut down the server and update your AI model? Or would you want to actually, as the deployment is functioning real time in the background, you're able to update the, those models? Which one do you think? The first one or the second case? What do you want? Would you like? Second case, obviously, right? So you want to be able to automatically enhance the neural network without shutting down anything. It needs to happen all, the, the network is, has been trained offline somewhere in the cloud and, and this needs to be deployed real time while the application is running in real time without turning off anything. And then that's what you can do. So you can enhance a neural network. So that's, that's uh, the other thing that you'd want to do is, so you've connected whatever 16 plus cameras here that are showing it, but let's say you want to increase the number of cameras real time more cameras are coming in. You should be able to scale up or scale out if you want. And that is possible too. So more cameras are in, you add more servers, and that has to happen seamlessly as well. So that's what actually the cloud does it for you today, if you know it or not. If you use the AWS cloud, or if you use the Azure cloud, or GCP, or any of those, they can automatically fire up a new instance. Anytime you increase your workload, you can fire up a new instance and transparently move the workload. The same thing needs to happen when you try to do edge computing, and that's exactly what we're doing here. So, Without changing anything, add more servers and automatically scale up if you have. So that's what the, the scale out here is. And then, obviously, you know, running AI is fine, but in the end, there needs to be an outcome. There is a value for the outcome. So in this case, the, the value that we're creating is detect anomalies and flag and flag any issues that are happening. You can actually quite see that uh, there's a driver uh, that is uh, driving the. Uh, wrong lane. And the neural network actually, we, we have this neural network that uh, not only detected that, but also detected this as an anomaly. It's rare that a person gets out of the car and starts walking around. So so that's, uh, so this is the, the complete platform that we built on top of this EGX, which is the platform that makes the cloud native stack come there. And then Metropolis is a platform that allows to do intelligent video analytics at, at scale which involves a lot of processing, a lot of AI models seamlessly uh, deployed. So, it's great that we have a platform, we have an underlying EGX platform, and then we built a platform for video analytics called Metropolis. But then, what do you need if you have a platform? You need a lot of apps, right? So if you, are, if you want to deploy this in your, you know, in, in your factory or in your traffic, smart city or in your smart building, you can have a lot of apps, AI apps, whether it's people want to do anomaly detection, people want to do face recognition, people want to do uh, people counting and uh, heat maps and, and, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of these applications in all of the geographies. 
So we have several hundred plus partners that have partnered to build all their applications on top of this platform, on top of the software development kit uh, that we released. And, and then, now, video analytics is one application. Now if you build, if you're, if you're a telco, and, and uh, if you're a big retail store, and you, you basically deploy these big servers or appliances on-premise in your store, you probably want to run more than one application. Sure, you might want to run video analytics because there are cameras there. But beyond that, maybe you want to run other applications. So, so you need more software stacks, not just that. So we actually, at NVIDIA, work on creating all these different frameworks. So Metropolis is for video analytics. <coughs> Clara is our stack for medical imaging. Drive is our stack for full self-driving cars and autonomous vehicles. Aerial is our stack for 5G, and that's what the gentleman here earlier from Ericsson talked about, where they're accelerating 5G core routines. Omniverse is a platform for doing simulation and rendering. And Isaac is a platform for uh, robotics. So these are some of the vertical frameworks that we build on top of our platforms. And then we work with a lot of partners, software, uh, application providers, system integrators, to build end products for each of those uh, different verticals. So just to give you a little bit of uh, you know the, the, the EGX platform and you know recently there's a lot of lot of companies have uh, uh, adopted this uh, platform. Not surprising, so all the leading companies like uh, Samsung, BMW have uh, put this in manufacturing, especially uh, automated optical inspection, machine vision is, has been one of those crucial application factories, and you would want to be able to use AI to that and, and do all of that on premise and not in the cloud. Uh, Walmart has been using this platform to uh, do massive uh, retail analytics tasks uh, in, in the store. We also partnered with uh, Microsoft recently where Microsoft is not only just doing Azure in the cloud but also bringing that to uh, bringing that into uh, Edge devices. So they built something called Azure Stack Edge for boxes so, so we partnered with them as well. Now, Last but not the least, the picture that I showed you earlier looked like a big server, right? I mean, it is a server. It's a GPU server. Guess what a server costs? <coughs> not the ten thousand dollars, right? The GPUs. I mean, that's typically what a server is. That's fine. That that is necessary for app. But there are many applications where you can't. You don't need a server. You actually want, a, let's say, a thousand dollar box, for example. But you want to have the same sort of functionality coming. And that's exactly what we're doing. So we have a Jetson line of products which are intended for small embedded devices. And then thanks to Linda, she showed you earlier many of those uh, different boxes, different hardware capabilities for different vertical industries that Advantech has built. And this is one of the devices that uh, Advantech has actually built using one of our Jetson line of products. And Jetson line of products start all the way from $100 to scales up depending on the amount of compute and storage. But the exact same software that I showed you, the demonstration that I showed you for different vertical stack, starts off all from a hundred dollar computer. How powerful is that? that? That really is the value proposition of being able to run AI, of course you have to be able to do that. But being able to build a cloud native stack and bring it to the edge all the way down to a small appliance that has a hundred dollar computer that includes the CPU, the GPU, the memory, the flash, the connectivity, the, the, the NIC, Everything in, in that computer for approximately hundred dollars. So a full box built is just a few hundred dollars. And starting with that, you can actually put the whole cloud native stack. And that is what we believe will really make AI at the edge happen. Because it's not just about running an AI model at the edge, but actually bringing all the software stack down from the cloud to the edge to make these really happen. I think so. With that, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time.